Welcome to Pharma Symposium. Today we are going to discuss about Wolf Parkinson White syndrome that is also called WPW syndrome. So basically prior to discussion to the disease or syndrome we have to know that is it is very rare. So further slides we will discuss in detail about the WPW syndrome. These are our contents introduction accessory pathways bundle of kent ecg interpretation of the wpw syndrome types of wpw syndrome symptoms of wpw syndrome supportive treatments what the surgery can perform so first of all we are coming to the introduction as i said it is very rare that is the incidence of the pre-excitation and wpw syndrome ranges from 0.1 to 3 cases per thousand population in the world and in the most of the cases it is congenital anomaly generally congenital anomaly means it is the birth defect that means accessory pathway that is the main thing which is present in the wpw syndrome since birth and you are seeing that the cardiologist louis wolf in 1898 to 1972 john parkinson and paul Dudley white according to their name this is named as old parkinson white syndrome and this is very it is not too much old it is very recent disorder or syndrome that is reported in 1930 in this case as you can see in this picture this is supraventricular tachycardia or paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia paroxysmal means fatal supra means supraventricular means the electrical impulse which is responsible for the tachycardia that is from atrium to the ventricle and there is risk for sudden cardiac death SAD and there are only supportive treatment and surgical procedure so there are no treatment involved the destruction of the accessory pathways till date so what are the accessory pathways in WPW syndrome, the accessory pathways, which is mainly associated, that is the bundle of kent. As you can see in this picture, the bundle of kent is, is a dot line, and which connects the SA, the sorry, which connects the atrium to the ventricle. Bundle of kent is the normal. Initially, it was the normal myocardial cell, like normal atrial cell, normal ventricular cell and it is behaving like the specialized myocardial cell like SA node, AV node, bundle of E's, Purkinje fibers, etc. So, bundle of cane has got the conductive property of impulse. So, from SA node, when the electrical impulse is uh, fired, it is going to the AV node and it is also going to the bundle of cane. This is the main reason for the WPW syndrome. There are another accessory pathways like James fiber, Mahim's fiber. Mahim's fiber is not shown in this picture. James fiber is attached with the SA node and bundle of E's. And Mahim's fiber is attached with the SA node and to the AV node. So James fiber is responsible for the LGL syndrome. That is a Lon Ganong Levine syndrome. This is also like WPW syndrome and which is very rare LGL syndrome. In that case, this, all the atrioventricular valves will not work due to rapid impulse conduction. So our primary concern is bundle of kind for WPW syndrome. So what are the characteristics? It is most commonly present on the left lateral side. First of all, we discuss we are discuss, discussing about the position of the bundle of kind. In the left lateral side means this yellow color, which is a uh, very common of the po common position of the bundle of kind. There are four positions that is the left lateral, antero and posteroseptal, and the right lateral. So out of that, the left lateral left lateral is most common. 
after that right lateral and very rare is the postroceptal type and you know this is the bundle of kent it is not the specialized myocardial tissue it behaves like that it has lesser refractory period than the specialized one so it is uh, taking very small interval of time to take rest it can take the current bidirectionally in this picture if this is a bundle of kent this is accessory pathway bundle of kent and here the sa node is there sa node is firing and you can see there is a current is passing to both direction that is from av node that is a normal pathway and from the accessory pathway this is the bundle of kent so if the impulse is conducted from atrium to the ventricle this is called anti grade conduction and if the impulse is conducted from the ventricle to the atrium this is called retrograde conduction so we can see in this picture bundle of kent can take the current bidirectionally and it has lesser refractory period than the specialized one that is from sa node av node and the purkinje fibers bundle of is so it will take very short time of rest so if we take that is sa node is firing and av node and the accessory pathways are present so current will first go into the bundle of kent and pre excite the ventricular tissue this is the main problem for the wpw syndrome and this is the main concept now the ecg interpretation of the wpw syndrome as we know there is a pre excitation of the ventricular cells is the main problem so first talk about the normal pqrst so sa node is firing av node is taking then it is going to the bundle of is then right bundle branch and the left bundle branch so as you can see in the normal pqrst that is the atrial depolarization that is shown by the p wave then qrs complex that is the ventricular phenomenon and qr is the sharp ventricular septal depolarization okay but what happens in case of wpw syndrome that is from sa node the current is stolen by the accessory pathway so there is a pre excitation is occurring pre excitation to the ventricular cells so pre excitation if it is happen then there will not be the sharp ventricular septal depolarization there will be slight it will be slight like looking like this this is called delta wave that is the pre excitation that is represented by the qrs complex that is a wide qrs complex and short pr interval short pr interval and wide qrs complex qrs is greater than 0.12 second or 120 millisecond you can say so delta wave is one of the features to detect or it is can it can be said it is a diagnostic tool to detect the wpw syndrome but not every case so what are the types of the wpw syndrome so depending upon the conduction there is a direction of conduction it is of two type there is orthodromic antidromic so in case of orthodromic current is going from the sa node to the av node and it is following first the normal pathway that is sa node av node bundle of is right bundle branch and the left bundle branch and current is reciprocating to the accessory pathways so initially it is going down from the normal pathway and it is reciprocating from the through the uh, that is abnormal pathway or accessory pathway this is called the orthodromic wpw or as it is reciprocating you can say orthodromic atrioventricular reciprocating tachycardia o a v r t so why it is atrioventricular as you know in case of uh, psvt that is a supraventricular that is current is passing from the 
atrium to the ventricle here is the same thing is phenomenon is happening next in case of antidromic from the SA node it is going to the first bundle of kin that is the accessory pathway and it is reciprocating through the normal pathway that is to the AV node and it is causing the tachycardia that means the cardiac cycle that is a instead of 0.8 second it is taking a very short time that means for 0.8 seconds suppose uh, it is taking 0.2 seconds so what will be the beats per minute that is 60 by 0.2 and in case of normal that is 60 by 0.8 so there are two that is the orthodromic atrioventricular reciprocating tachycardia and antidromic atrioventricular reciprocating tachycardia now classification based on the delta wave position on the ECG as we have discussed that is the delta wave is the diagnostic tool for detecting the WPW syndrome it is true but not in every case so if it is present and it's showing the positive deflection that is above the x-axis is positive deflection so then uh, on the survey it is proved that it is uh, the bundle of kin it is present on the left lateral side that means I am going to the picture that is the left lateral side and in most of the cases like 85% uh, of the WPW patients are facing the left lateral bundle of kin it is very common left lateral side so if the delta wave deflection is positive the bundle of kin will be present on the left lateral side if the delta wave deflection is negative as you can see in this picture delta wave deflection is negative that is the below the x-axis it will be present in the right lateral side and both the ECG lead, lead 2 will be taken that is the right lateral side and for anteroseptal and postroseptal we are discussing here so for postroseptal there is a positive delta waves in most of the chest leads and negative in the inferior leads and anteroseptal negative delta waves in leads v1 and v2 anteroseptal postroseptal is very common and it needs more practice to diagnosis to diagnose and anteroseptal it is also very common there is a negative delta waves in leads v1 and v2 which is one of the part of the chest leads now what are the symptoms of the WPW syndrome the symptoms are quite fatal sometime that is first of all the patients will face that is a palpitation palpitation is nothing but the unpleasant awareness in the uh, heart unpleasant awareness in the heart palpitation dizziness is common due to hypoxia in brain ischemia in brain shortness of breath is common due to tachycardia tachycardia there is a mostly ventricular tachycardia and paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia is happened uh, as we have discussed and in this ECG you can see that is a white QRS complexes are there white QRS complex shortness of breath fainting fatigue anxiety syncope always high BP maintained that is 140 by 19 some patients there is a normal high normal condition is also maintained if left untreated there is a uh, sudden cardiac death may occur along with myocardial infarction so what are the supportive treatments in this picture you can see there is a AV node and bundle of kin both are present in heart so this is the right lateral side so ECG deflection of the delta wave will be on negative side so AV nodal blocking agents, calcium channel blocker like verapamil, dilsia gem, which are more cardio selective. That is verapamil is a phenyl alkylamine and dilsia gem. That is a benzothiazepine group of drug, which is 120 mg sustained release are given mainly. And IV adenosine is in emergency case is also given. Patients with WPW positive pattern generally treated by bisoprolol that is a not asthma patient only initially uh, before the uh, before doing the electrophysiological study generally calcium channel blocker is given but also in some cases bisoprolol like beta blockers beta 1 blockers are also given but in case of non asthma patients only 
So, Vera Pamil, that is a phenyl alkynamine. Dilsia gem is a benzothiazepine of drug, benzothiazepine kind of drug, which generally blocks the AV node. So, current will pass from only the bundle of kent. So, pre excitation will be there, but there will not be tachycardia. But some kind of drug like amiodarone, which is uh, very toxic upon long term use and show some very 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 much side effects like corneal deposition hepatotoxicity and other etc etc and in emergency cases iv adenosine very small dose are given to uh, block the av node to cause the third degree block second degree block first degree block according to the condition and cases where we cannot use the av node blocker so actually this picture is showing the atrial fibrillation in case of atrial fibrillation the multiple blue uh, here you can see there multiple blue uh, arrows are there that is showing the microcirculation so in atrial fibrillation what's happened that is the uh, beats will be per, up to 350 beats per minute and there will be microcirculation microelectrical circulation in the uh, atrial cell so it is not passing to the ventricle we have to pass to the ventricle and there are two windows one is bundle of kent or another one is av node and if the bundle of kent is activated av node is blocked the ventricle will also get the fibrillation so ventricular fibrillation will be there take, takes place and sudden cardiac death may happen so in this case iv procanamide should be given procanamide does uh, procanamide is uh, blocks the bundle of kent and current is just passed from the av node that is from the neutralizing and in this patient there will not be any kind of further treatment cardioversion should be done so surgery as you know this is the failure of medicine radio frequency catheter ablation procedure which is uh, having the cure rate of about 95% it is very efficient surgery surgical procedure so in this case what is done that is in the groin region in right femoral artery it is anesthetized mainly by the xylocaine and uh, two catheter tubes are entered and the entry of the catheter tubes by the x-ray as you can see in this picture that is from the femoral artery the catheters are in uh, got entry and it is a x-ray guided uh, x-ray guided entry is happening so next to that from the inferior vena cava two catheters t catheter tubes will be there in the right atrium first and by doing the transeptal pore to the right atrium and the uh, left atrium it is entering to the left atrium as you can as you know that is the left lateral portion is quite common so bundle of kent is present like in between these so there will be two catheter one is the mapping catheter another one is the ablation catheter mapping catheter will detect the position of the bundle of kent and ablation catheter will ablate by emitting the radio frequency and the bundle of kent will be uh, completely degenerated and there will not be any kind of impulse conduction after that so it is complete setup the person is lying in operation theater that is the electrophysiological setup is there uh, this is a x-ray machine uh, continue pa x-ray is guiding the catheter entry and the whole operation and uh, doctors are seeing the whole thing in the monitor and uh, you can see this is a chest uh, portion where the catheters are entered and it is going to the heart and bundle of kent is completely degenerated so it is having the 95 percent cure rate so these are the references you can refer and this is the davidson principles and practice of medicine i have used and along with the kd three party pharmacology book where it is very clear and uh, thank you.